Kyle Howarth. I myself have had a cultic experience, and there was a book I read on recovery, and it mentions about a thing called floating, which is where there will be times in which you're just staring into space, if you will, and you start reminiscing on the good times in the cult. Think about missing it and want to go back. My question is, have you experienced this and ever thought to go back despite the bad stuff due to missing family and friends, etc.? Okay, good question, Kyle. Um, I've certainly experienced instances of what I guess you would call floating, uh, where, you know, in daydreaming or even more frequently over the last, you know, six, seven years um, in, uh, in nightmares, in, in real dreams. Uh, where I have experienced, you know, going back or being back or being stuck back or, you know, getting trapped back in it or something. Um, and I know the question is more along the lines of, you know, like voluntarily going back, and I'll get to that, but I'm just kind of saying some of what I've experienced over the years with this. There was a lot more of that at the beginning, a lot more of those nightmarish kind of episodes early on. And that took a few years to kind of chill out where it doesn't really happen as frequently anymore. Um, you know, once every few months, let's say now, whereas, you know, back in the early days, it was, well, it was more frequent. Um, now, as far as voluntarily going back or looking back on it with fondness and, and the friends I miss and the, 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 the things about it, you know, I've commented a little bit about this in the past on the fact that there is a great deal of certainty, assuredness, confidence that Scientology gives you in a worldview and belief system that is all-encompassing or claims to be all-encompassing. And so you feel like you're walking around with all the answers. You know, you feel like you've got, a, you got life taped, you, you understand people, you know where they're coming from, you know why they act the way they do, you see them do stupid, silly, crazy stuff, and you go, yep, the reactive mind, or oh yeah, that's an evil purpose, or oh, clearly the guy hasn't misunderstood, or what, whatever your label explanation is for it, based on L. Ron Hubbard's, you know, teachings. Um, there is There are very few situations that you're going to run across as a Scientologist that you're not going to feel like you know exactly what's going on and exactly what the actual problem is, and you therefore feel like you're on top of it, you're not in confused about life, you know, there's life will throw you curves and problems that you're going to have to deal with, but uh, when it comes to human behavior and where people are coming from and why people act the way they do and why the world is such a confusing mess and all of that, you feel like you have answers for all of those questions. And, and you do have answers for them. They just don't happen to be true. So, um, so that level, I've commented before and I'll say again here, uh, that level of certainty is something that I have missed in the past. I have, I have yearned for it. It has been a difficult thing to not have that and to instead be filled with questions and, and be having to hunt for the answers and finding that in many cases those answers don't exist or at least don't exist in the, to the degree that I was used to them existing. Where you could simply go and look up the answer in an index somewhere to why people get sick, why, you know, this, that, the other thing, right? Why do people argue? Why are people critical? Why, you know, blah, 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 right? Why don't, why don't kids get along with their parents? Why don't parents get along with their kids? Et cetera, et cetera. I. L. Ron Hubbard had something to say about all this stuff. Um, now I'm finding that you know, if you really want to find the answers to these things, that you're finding that the answers are kind of complicated and very uncertain, and uh, and that that is, and the science is really all about probabilities uh, more so than 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 solid certainties. That's not that's not what science does for us, and um, and it's the confusion about that that actually creates a lot of the animosity towards science. <laughs> So, um, okay, so, so that is something that I've, had a, that I've had issues with over the years. And of course, I have certainly had times where I have missed people, the, the loss of relationships that I had um, sometimes can be quite painful because, you, you know, you, you lose people and, and to disconnection or, you know, because life just happens and you move on. And sometimes you get the little heart pangs, you know, the little, oh, I, I, you know, you see something that reminds you of them or, or a show or, you know, something like that. So that kind of thing happens, certainly. I would say it happens less to me now than it used to. But, um, and that's all just part of the, you know, mo moving on and having more time and distance from, 
you know, the source of the trauma and the pain and all that. And of course, all the active, you know, work I've been doing on recovery. So, um, so anyway, yeah, I have experienced floating. I have experienced the idea of, you know, wouldn't it be nice if I could go back and have that kind of certainty again and fall in line with a belief system that, you know, gives you all the answers. Wouldn't that be nice? You know, yeah, sure, sure I have. But, uh, but, it, but, but it's never really been a tempting choice because um, I will, you know, my philosophy at this point in my life uh, is that I would much rather live with an uncomfortable truth than uh, a convenient lie. So that's, that's my answer.